There are times when Jekyll simply can't do what we need it to. Fortunately, with Jekyll plugins, we can write or download Ruby code to extend Jekyll to do whatever we need. Jekyll plugins fall into five categories. First, we have generators, which create content on your site. For example, we have Jekyll feed, which creates an atom feed of your blog posts. Jekyll archives, which creates archive pages of your categories and tags. And a site map, which generates a site map of your site. Next, we have converters, which change a document on your site into another format. So if you're using textile, this plugin will convert it to HTML. You can use CoffeeScript, which will be converted to JavaScript. Or with Jekyll Opal, you can actually write Ruby code uh, and it will translate it to JavaScript. Commands extend the Jekyll executable with subcommands. For example, Jekyll Compose gives us shortcuts to easily add pages and posts and publish or unpublish blog posts as well. Tags create custom liquid tags. So they'll do things like help you embed YouTube videos. This one helps you manage assets in blog posts. Uh, and this one it outputs a Swift object. We can also write our own liquid filters. So Jekyll time ago will tell you in words how long ago a date was. TOC will generate a table of content from a piece of content. Uh, and email protect obfuscates emails to protect them from spam bots. The final category of plugin is a hook, which gives us fine grained control of where we want to actually run code. This is new in Jekyll 3, so there's not many examples of plugins using hooks. So that's an overview of the different sorts of things you can do with plugins. Let's have a look at how we can install them. So the first method we're going to look at is just adding a Ruby file to the underscore plugins directory on our site. So this is a Jekyll filter plugin. And what it does is you pass it a piece of content and it gives you an estimated read time. So I'll just copy the code for the plugin and then move over to my site. Okay, on our site, we're going to create a new folder called underscore plugins. And inside that, create a file called readingtime.rb. So rb is the extension of Ruby files. Then I'll paste my plugin here. And that's it. Now the plugin's installed. And it has example usage here. So you start with a string and then filter it through reading time. Let's add this to our blog posts. So I'll open up the post layout um, and I'll just put it after the category. So we'll output content, run it through the reading time filter. Let's have a look at the live site. Now on blog posts, I have this bit of text here, which is the estimated read time of this content. This method is good because it's really easy to install plugins, uh, but there's a much better way to install plugins, which will make your life a lot easier in the long run. And that method is using a gem file. If you're not familiar with gems, gem files, or the bundler, we have another tutorial which goes into these topics in depth. So we're installing the Jekyll feed plugin. Uh, we're adding an atom feed to the site. So the first thing we need to do is create a gem file in the root of our site. The first thing you put in gem files is a source, which will usually be rubygems.org. Then we want to add the Jekyll gem, uh, and we'll install a specific version. Um, this is the current latest version of Jekyll. Then we're going to create a group. And putting your Jekyll plugins in a, in a group just saves a step down the road. Um, usually you would have to specify the plugins you're using in your underscore config file so Jekyll can require them. However, if they're in a Jekyll plugins group, this happens automatically. Then we just need to specify our Jekyll feed plugin. Okay, now to install the plugins, we'll head over to the command line. So now we've set up our gem file, I can run bundle install which is going to install all the plugins in our gem file. That's set up, and now when I want to run Jekyll, I just run bundle exec Jekyll serve. Let's have a look at the live site. 
and if we go to slash feed.xml we have a full atom feed of the blog posts on our site. To finish off we'll go over a few places you can discover new Jekyll plugins. One thing to be wary of is a lot of Jekyll plugins were built for previous versions of Jekyll and haven't been tested on the latest version. So if you're using an older plugin just make sure you give it a really good test. So on Jekyll Tips we have a plugin section where we keep a list of Jekyll plugins which work with the latest Jekyll versions. Another good place to look is the Jekyll organization on GitHub. So this is all their officially maintained plugins. And finally the plugin page in the Jekyll docs has a huge list of Jekyll plugins at the bottom of the page. And just be wary some of these haven't been updated in a very long time. This tutorial was brought to you by Cloud Cannon, the cloud content management system for Jekyll. For more free tutorials like this one, check out learn.cloudcannon.com.